With patch 2.8.1.1, Bungie decided to make some adjustments to the performance of the exotic auto rifle, Hardlight. Hardlight was the number one weapon in terms of kills every single weekend of trials since the famed game type has been released. The outcry from a majority of the PvP community was calling for some type of adjustment to be made to this nuisance that seemed to be pestering Guardians every single engagement within Trials. Now, with it being almost three weeks since the patch has been live, I wanted to see which weapon would take its place as the top dog in Trials of Osiris. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Man of Cole, and today, let's compare Hardlight and the Summoner. So as I mentioned earlier with patch 2.8.1.1, Hardlight was the victim to some damage adjustments. The first thing that was adjusted was the damage falloff. Before this patch, Hardlight had zero damage falloff. So in other words, no matter where you were on the map, the Hardlight would do the exact same amount of damage whether you were 10 meters away or 100. However, with the damage falloff now flooring at 0.7 times, it actually sits above any other auto rifle at 0.5 times. I have a little bit of an issue with this change. For those of you that didn't know or just weren't aware, within the actual lore of Hardlight, it actually states that this weapon is supposed to have zero damage falloff. Here's a snippet of the lore where this is stated. The first is a quick config interface for outgoing damage. The second is a ricochet projectile that bounces off any surface. And the third, an infinite range zero drop off projection weapon platform. So one of the most unique and defying parts of this weapon that actually made it feel exotic was just stripped away from it. Without this part of the video turning into a shame bungee platform, I do think that they could have made other adjustments to the weapon that could have suppressed its no damage falloff mechanic. The next thing they adjusted was the ricochet bonus damage. Now what they did here is actually pretty interesting and I applaud them for doing it, because to my knowledge this is the first time that Bungie has ever decided to split a weapon's effectiveness between PvE and PvP. Ricochet damage now only does 1.35 times the damage in PvP versus a 2.0 times damage bonus in PvE. This change was 100% warranted, as if you were to try and kill someone with ricochet rounds and you were hitting all crit shots, it actually only took 4 bullets to down a full health guardian. I actually advocated for this adjustment a while ago, because if you were facing an entire team of people just spamming the hard light, it was very difficult to either retreat and gain your health back after an engagement, or to try to get a res on your teammates. The last thing that they removed was a recoil adjustment that made the weapon more stable than intended. So now that we know where Hardlight is now, does it still reign supreme in Trials? Quick spoiler, no it doesn't. For the last three weeks as of the making of this video, a new auto rifle has overtaken the most primary kills thrown in Trials, and that weapon is the Summoner. The Summoner is a 600 RPM legendary energy auto rifle that is obtained by playing Trials of Osiris. To some of you, this might be a completely new weapon that you have had zero experience with in the past. But for others, this is your second time around grinding for this reintroduced auto. The summoner was a part of the loot table back in Destiny 1 when they launched the initial Trials of Osiris. The only way that you were able to get this weapon was from the lighthouse chest on Mercury. Overall, the gun still behaves relatively the same as it did in D1, which might contribute to the recent spike in usage. I want to do a quick experiment in this video. I'm going to be showing you all an image here that has the base stats of two different auto rifles and I want you to think about which one of these you would rather use. As you can see, they both have the same impact rating, meaning they were the same 600 RPM archetype, and they both have the same base range stat. Now, based off the other stats that you see, which one of these would you rather use in your loadout? For me, the clear choice would be to choose the one on the left. It has a higher stability, handling, reload speed, magazine size, aim assistance, which is actually maxed out, and a 100 recoil rating, meaning it basically has a perfect vertical recoil. Now, what if I told you that the weapon on the right has almost 1 million more kills than the one on the left does for this week of Trials? That's right, the Summoner is currently the number one primary in terms of kills in Trials right now, and it is almost taking over as the number one weapon in terms of kills in Trials. So if the Hardlight has better stats across the board, then why is it not being used over something that is statistically inferior? There are a few reasons why I think this might be the case. The first, and probably the least likely one, is that it frees up an exotic slot. In PvP, and especially in Trials, there really is no need to use your exotic slot for your heavy weapon. Most of the time, at least in my experience, heavy ammo was never really utilized in the third round because either team would use the heavy spawn as bait to try and kill the other team. And with the summoner being an energy weapon, there really aren't any primary exotics that can justifiably be used as a special weapon because, let's be real, if you run double primaries in Trials or PvP, you're putting yourself at a significant disadvantage. 
The only exotics I could see people using in the primary slot would be the Chaperone and maybe the Bastion, but that's it. The second reason is that the Summoner can have mods placed on it to further increase its effectiveness. Mods like Counterbalance, Target Adjuster, Icarus Grip, and Backup Mag are all mods that can increase very crucial parts to this weapon's lethality, therefore making it more appealing to a player. I mean, think about it. Mods that increase stability, aim assistance, accuracy, mag size, why would you not want to increase any of those areas? Part of this could also be psychological as well. When players end up putting mods on their weapons, it can sometimes create this increased sense of, oh, now that I have counterbalance on my weapon, it's going to be way easier to use. Or I can finally jump around on my hunter and use this now that I have Icarus Grip on it. Now I'm not saying every player does this, but I can tell you that there are more than likely people out there that say, oh, I can put mods on this weapon? Heck, I might as well use it over the hard light because I can't do that on the hard light. The third reason, and probably the most likely reason, is that you can grind for a desirable roll. With the capability of rolling different barrel mods, magazine perks, and weapon perks in general, this seems to be the likely reason people are so inclined to use the summoner over the hard light. While the hard light is very strong in its own right, and even more so if you end up getting the catalyst which maxes out the stability bar, we just love to grind for rolls on weapons that suit our playstyle. I mean, that's the whole reason we play the game, right? To grind for loot that we like. In the first perk slot, you're either going to want moving target, zen moment, or if you're really desperate, dynamic sway reduction. In the final perk slot, you've got a few more options. Rampage, rangefinder, even celerity, but really only for trials, and elemental capacitor if you run a void subclass, as it increases stability. I would also try to shoot for either high caliber rounds or ricochet rounds, and finally, either a stability or a range masterwork. Now, all of this on paper, is nice to look at, but we also have to take into account how the weapon actually plays out in the Crucible. Much like any kind of sports team, they could have the best players on paper, but ultimately it comes down to how they perform against the opposition. So let's take a look at some damage numbers. Both the Hard Light and the Summoner have an optimal time to kill of 0.70 seconds and a body shot time to kill of 1.20 seconds. Both weapons will do 25 crit damage and 16 body shot damage. However, these numbers can vary due to the light level differences in Trials, as well as the summoner being able to roll the perk Rampage, which increases damage after getting a kill with the weapon. I actually don't have a summoner with Rampage, but I believe with one stack of Rampage proc'd, it increases the crit damage to about 27 per hit. Let me know down in the comments if that's right. With all of that said, you might be wondering, is one of them actually better than the other? To which I'm going to say, yes. I actually think Hard Light is the better auto to use in PvP simply for its stats and ease of use alone. I know grinding for an auto that has good perks that can boost your playstyle is incredibly useful to have as a weapon, but in terms of how easy a weapon is to use and how consistent a weapon can be for you, I still think Hard Light is the more reliable option of the two. Don't get me wrong though, I'm absolutely going to continue to grind for my god roll summoner, because it's still going to be an incredibly strong option to use in PvP. This all boils down to personal preference though. Some of you, or even all of you, as evidenced by the total kills, stat, and trials, might think the summoner is the clear choice and that's great. I'm all ears, I'd love to hear everyone's opinion on this. Which of these autos are you finding yourself using more? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. The last couple videos I mentioned that about 95% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel. Well, that has actually gotten a lot better, so thank you for those of you that are choosing to support the channel in that way. It means a lot to me. Links to my Twitch channel, Discord, and Destiny Clan are all going to be in the description box below. Thank you all very much for watching, a positive rating is always appreciated, and as always, we'll see ya.